Fat Man was the codename for the nuclear bomb that was detonated over the Japanese city of Nagasaki by the United States on 9 August 1945. It was the second of the only two nuclear weapons ever used in warfare, the first being Little Boy, and its detonation marked the third nuclear explosion in history. It was built by scientists and engineers at Los Alamos Laboratory using plutonium from the Hanford site, and it was dropped from the Boeing B-29 Superfortress boxcar piloted by Major Charles Sweeney. The name Fat Man refers to the early design of the bomb because it had a wide, round shape, it was also known as the Mark III. Fat Man was an implosion-type nuclear weapon with a solid plutonium core. The first of that type to be detonated was the gadget in the Trinity nuclear test less than a month earlier on 16 July at the Alamogordo Bombing and Gunnery Range in New Mexico. Two more were detonated during the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests at Bikini Atoll in 1946, and some 120 were produced between 1947 and 1949, when it was superseded by the Mark IV nuclear bomb. The Fat Man was retired in 1950. Topic: <laughs> Early decisions. Robert Oppenheimer held conferences in Chicago in June 1942, prior to the Army taking over wartime atomic research, and in Berkeley, California, in July, at which various engineers and physicists discussed nuclear bomb design issues. They chose a gun-type design in which two sub-critical masses would be brought together by firing a bullet into a target. Richard C. Tallman suggested an implosion type nuclear weapon, but the idea attracted scant consideration. The feasibility of a plutonium bomb was questioned in 1942. Wallace Akers, the director of the British Tube Alloys project, told James Bryant Conant on 14 November that James Chadwick had concluded that plutonium might not be a practical fissionable material for weapons because of impurities. Conant consulted Ernest Lawrence and Arthur Compton, who acknowledged that their scientists at Berkeley and Chicago respectively knew about the problem, but they could offer no ready solution. Conant informed Manhattan Project Director Brigadier General Leslie R. Groves, Jr., who in turn assembled a special committee consisting of Lawrence, Compton, Oppenheimer, and Macmillan to examine the issue. The committee concluded that any problems could be overcome simply by requiring higher purity. Oppenheimer reviewed his options in early 1943 and gave priority to the gun type weapon, but he created the E 5 group at the Los Alamos laboratory under Seth Nettermeyer to investigate implosion as a hedge against the threat of pre detonation. Implosion type bombs were determined to be significantly more efficient in terms of explosive yield per unit mass of fissile material in the bomb, because compressed fissile materials react more rapidly and therefore more completely. Nonetheless, it was decided that the plutonium gun would receive the bulk of the research effort, since it was the project with the least amount of uncertainty involved. It was assumed that the uranium gun type bomb could be easily adapted from it. Naming The gun type and implosion type designs were codenamed Thin Man and Fat Man, respectively. These code names were created by Robert Serber, a former student of Oppenheimer's who worked on the Manhattan Project. He chose them based on their design shapes. The Thin Man was a very long device, and the name came from the Dashiell Hammett detective novel The Thin Man and series of movies. The Fat Man was round and fat and was named after Sidney Greenstreet's character in The Maltese Falcon. Little Boy came last as a variation of Thin Man. <laughs> <laughs> development Nettermeyer discarded Serber and Tallman's initial concept of implosion as assembling a series of pieces in favor of one in which a hollow sphere was imploded by an explosive shell. He was assisted in this work by Hugh Bradner, Charles Critchfield, and John Strybe. L. T. E. Thompson was brought in as a consultant, and discussed the problem with Nettermeyer in June 1943. Thompson was skeptical that an implosion could be made sufficiently symmetric. Oppenheimer arranged for Nettermeyer and Edwin McMillan to visit the National Defense Research Committee's Explosives Research Laboratory near the laboratories of the Bureau of Mines in Brewston, Pennsylvania, a Pittsburgh suburb, where they spoke to George Kistiakowski and his team. But Nettermeyer's efforts in July and August at imploding tubes to produce cylinders tended to produce objects that resembled rocks. 
Nettermeyer was the only person who believed that implosion was practical, and only his enthusiasm kept the project alive. Oppenheimer brought John von Neumann to Los Alamos in September 1943 to take a fresh look at implosion. After reviewing Nettermeyer's studies, and discussing the matter with Edward Teller, von Neumann suggested the use of high explosives in shaped charges to implode a sphere, which he showed could not only result in a faster assembly of fissile material than was possible with the gun method, but which could greatly reduce the amount of material required, because of the resulting higher density. The idea that, under such pressures, the plutonium metal itself would be compressed came from Teller, whose knowledge of how dense metals behaved under heavy pressure was influenced by his pre-war theoretical studies of the Earth's core with George Gamow. The prospect of more efficient nuclear weapons impressed Oppenheimer, Teller, and Hans Bethe, but they decided that an expert on explosives would be required. Kistiakowski's name was immediately suggested, and Kistiakowski was brought into the project as a consultant in October 1943. The implosion project remained a backup until April 1944, when experiments by Emilio G. Segre and his P 5 group at Los Alamos on the newly reactor produced plutonium from the X 10 graphite reactor at Oak Ridge and the B reactor at the Hanford site showed that it contained impurities in the form of the isotope plutonium 240. This has a far higher spontaneous fission rate and radioactivity than plutonium-239. The cyclotron-produced isotopes, on which the original measurements had been made, held much lower traces of plutonium-240. Its inclusion in reactor-bred plutonium appeared unavoidable. This meant that the spontaneous fission rate of the reactor plutonium was so high that it would be highly likely that it would predetonate and blow itself apart during the initial formation of a critical mass. The distance required to accelerate the plutonium to speeds where predetonation would be less likely would need a gun barrel too long for any existing or planned bomber. The only way to use plutonium in a workable bomb was therefore implosion. The impracticability of a gun-type bomb using plutonium was agreed at a meeting in Los Alamos on 17 July 1944. All gun-type work in the Manhattan Project was directed at the Little Boy, enriched uranium gun design, and the Los Alamos Laboratory was reorganized, with almost all of the research focused on the problems of implosion for the Fat Man bomb. The idea of using shaped charges as three-dimensional explosive lenses came from James L. Tuck, and was developed by von Neumann. To overcome the difficulty of synchronizing multiple detonations, Luis Alvarez and Lawrence Johnston invented exploding bridgewire detonators to replace the less precise primacord detonation system. Robert Christie is credited with doing the calculations that showed how a solid subcritical sphere of plutonium could be compressed to a critical state, greatly simplifying the task, since earlier efforts had attempted the more difficult compression of a hollow spherical shell. After Christie's report, the solid plutonium core weapon was referred to as the Christie gadget. The task of the metallurgists was to determine how to cast plutonium into a sphere. The difficulties became apparent when attempts to measure the density of plutonium gave inconsistent results. At first contamination was believed to be the cause, but it was soon determined that there were multiple allotropes of plutonium. The brittle alpha phase that exists at room temperature changes to the plastic beta phase at higher temperatures. Attention then shifted to the even more malleable delta phase that normally exists in the 300 to 450 degrees Celsius 570 to 840 degrees Fahrenheit range. It was found that this was stable at room temperature when alloyed with aluminum, but aluminum emits neutrons when bombarded with alpha particles, which would exacerbate the pre-ignition problem. The metallurgists then hit upon a plutonium-gallium alloy, which stabilized the delta phase and could be hot-pressed into the desired spherical shape. As plutonium was found to corrode readily, the sphere was coated with nickel. The size of the bomb was constrained by the available aircraft. The only Allied aircraft capable of carrying the Fat Man were the British Avro Lancaster and the American Boeing B-29 Superfortress. For logistic and nationalistic reasons, the B-29 was preferred, but this constrained the bomb to a maximum length of 11 feet 3.4 meters, width of 5 feet 1.5 meters and weight of 20,000 pounds 9,100 kilograms. Removing the bomb rails allowed a maximum width of 5.5 feet 1.7 meters. Drop tests began in March 1944, and resulted in modifications to the silverplate aircraft due to the weight of the bomb. High-speed photographs revealed that the tail fins folded under the pressure, resulting in an erratic descent. 
Various combinations of stabilizer boxes and fins were tested on the Fat Man shape to eliminate its persistent wobble until an arrangement dubbed a California parachute. A cubical open rear tail box outer surface with eight radial fins inside of it, four angled at 45 degrees and four perpendicular to the line of fall holding the outer square fin box to the bomb's rear end, was approved. In drop tests in early weeks, the Fat Man missed its target by an average of 1,857 feet 566 meters, but this was halved by June as the bombardiers became more proficient with it. The early Y1222 model Fat Man was assembled with some 1,500 bolts. This was superseded by the Y1291 design in December 1944. This redesign work was substantial, and only the Y1222 tail design was retained. Later versions included the Y1560, which had 72 detonators, the Y1561, which had 32, and the Y1562, which had 132. There were also the Y1563 and Y1564, which were practice bombs with no detonators at all. The final wartime Y1561 design was assembled with just 90 bolts. On 16 July 1945, a Y1561 model Fat Man, known as the Gadget, was detonated in a test explosion at a remote site in New Mexico, known as the Trinity test. It gave a yield of about 20 kilotons. 84 terajoules. Some minor changes were made to the design as a result of the Trinity test. Philip Morrison recalled that there were some changes of importance. The fundamental thing was, of course, very much the same. Topic. Interior The bomb was 128 inches 3, mm long and 60 inches 1, mm in diameter. It weighed 10,300 pounds 4, kilograms. Topic. Assembly The plutonium pit was 3.62 inch 92 mm in diameter and contained an urchin modulated neutron initiator that was 0.8 inch 20 mm in diameter. The depleted uranium tamper was a 8.75 inch 222 mm diameter sphere, surrounded by a 0.125 inch 3.2 mm thick shell of boron impregnated plastic. The plastic shell had a 5-inch mm diameter cylindrical hole running through it, like the hole in a cord apple, in order to allow insertion of the pit as late as possible. The missing tamper cylinder containing the pit could be slipped in through a hole in the surrounding 18.5-inch mm diameter aluminum pusher. The pit was warm to touch, emitting 2.4 with kilogram poo, about 15 W for the 6.19 kilograms 13.6 pounds core. The explosion symmetrically compressed the plutonium to twice its normal density before the urchin added free neutrons to initiate a fission chain reaction. The result was the fission of about 1 kilogram 2.2 pounds of the 6.19 kilograms 13.6 pounds of plutonium in the pit i.e. of about 16% of the fissile material present. 1 gram 0.035 ounces of matter in the bomb is converted into the active energy of heat and radiation releasing the energy equivalent to the detonation of 21 kilotons of TNT or 88 terajoules. topic Bombing of Nagasaki The first plutonium core was transported with its polonium beryllium modulated neutron initiator in the custody of Project Alberta courier Remer Schreiber in a magnesium field carrying case designed for the purpose by Philip Morrison. Magnesium was chosen because it does not act as a tamper. It left Kirtland Army Air Field on a C-54 transport aircraft of the 509th Composite Group's 320th Troop Carrier Squadron on 26 July and arrived at North Field on Tinian on 28 July. Three Fat Man High Explosive Pre-Assemblies designated F-31, F-32, and F-33 were picked up at Kirtland on 28 July by three B-29s, Luke the Spook and Lagan Dragon from the 509th Composite Group's 393D Bombardment Squadron, and another from the 216th AAF Base Unit. The cores were transported to North Field, arriving on 2 August, when F-31 was partly disassembled in order to check all its components. 
F-33 was expended near Tinian during a final rehearsal on 8 August, and F-31 was the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. F-32 presumably would have been used for a third attack or its rehearsal. In August 1945, the Fat Man was assembled on Tinian by Project Alberta personnel, and the physics package was fully assembled and wired. It was placed inside its ellipsoidal aerodynamic bombshell and wheeled out, where it was signed by nearly 60 people, including Rear Admiral William R. Purnell, Brigadier General Thomas F. Farrell, and Captain William S. Parsons. It was then wheeled to the bomb bay of the B-29 Superfortress named Boxcar after the plane's command pilot Captain Frederick C. Bach, who flew the great artiste with his crew on the mission. Boxcar was flown by Major Charles W. Sweeney and his crew, with Commander Frederick L. Ashworth from Project Alberta as the weaponier in charge of the bomb. Boxcar lifted off at 3.47 on the morning of 9 August 1945, with Kokura as the primary target and Nagasaki the secondary target. The weapon was already armed, but with the green electrical safety plugs still engaged. Ashworth changed them to red after 10 minutes so that Sweeney could climb to 17,000 feet 5, meters in order to get above storm clouds. During pre-flight inspection of Boxcar, the flight engineer notified Sweeney that an inoperative fuel transfer pump made it impossible to use 640 U.S. gallons 2, L of fuel carried in a reserve tank. This fuel would still have to be carried all the way to Japan and back, consuming still more fuel. Replacing the pump would take hours, moving the fat man to another aircraft might take just as long and was dangerous as well, as the bomb was live. Colonel Paul Tibbets and Sweeney therefore elected to have Boxcar continue the mission. The original target for the bomb was the city of Kokura, but it was found to be obscured by clouds and drifting smoke from fires started by a major firebombing raid by 224 B-29s on nearby Yahata the previous day. This covered 70% of the area over Kokura, obscuring the aiming point. Three bomb runs were made over the next 50 minutes, burning fuel and repeatedly exposing the aircraft to the heavy defenses of Yahada, but the bombardier was unable to drop visually. By the time of the third bomb run, Japanese anti-aircraft fire was getting close. Second Lieutenant Jacob Besser was monitoring Japanese communications, and he reported activity on the Japanese fighter direction radio bands. Sweeney then proceeded to the alternative target of Nagasaki. It was obscured by cloud, as well, and Ashworth ordered Sweeney to make a radar approach. At the last minute, however, Bombardier Captain Kermit K. Behan found a hole in the clouds. The fat man was dropped and exploded at 11.02 local time, following a 43-second free fall at an altitude of about 1,650 feet 500 meters. There was poor visibility due to cloud cover and the bomb missed its intended detonation point by almost two miles, so damage was somewhat less extensive than that in Hiroshima. An estimated 35,000 to 40,000 people were killed outright by the bombing at Nagasaki. A total of 60,000 to 80,000 fatalities resulted, including from long-term health effects, the strongest of which was leukemia with an attributable risk of 46% for bomb victims. Others died later from related blast and burn injuries, and hundreds more from radiation illnesses from exposure to the bomb's initial radiation. Most of the direct deaths and injuries were among munitions or industrial workers. Mitsubishi's industrial production in the city was also severed by the attack. The dockyard would have produced at 80% of its full capacity within three to four months. The steel works would have required a year to get back to substantial production. The electric works would have resumed some production within two months and been back at capacity within six months. And the arms plant would have required 15 months to return to 60 to 70% of former capacity. The Mitsubishi Urakami Ordnance Works was the factory that manufactured the Type 91 torpedoes released in the attack on Pearl Harbor. It was destroyed in the blast. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Post-war development. After the war, two Y-1561 Fat Man bombs were used in the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests at Bikini Atoll in the Pacific. The first was known as Gilda after Rita Hayworth's character in the 1946 movie Gilda, and it was dropped by the B-29 Dave's Dream. It missed its aim point by 710 yards 650 meters. The second bomb was nicknamed Helen of Bikini and was placed without its tail fin assembly in a steel caisson made from a submarine's conning tower. It was detonated 90 feet 27 meters beneath the landing craft USS LSM-60. 
The two weapons yielded about 23 kilotons 96 terajoules each. The Los Alamos Laboratory and the Army Air Forces had already commenced work on improving the design. The North American B-45 Tornado, Convair XB-46, Martin XB-48, and Boeing B-47 Stratojet bombers had bomb bays sized to carry the Grand Slam, which was much longer but not as wide as the Fat Man. The only American bombers that could carry the Fat Man were the B-29 and the Convair B-36. In November 1945, the Army Air Forces asked Los Alamos for 200 Fat Man bombs, but there were only two sets of plutonium cores and high explosive assemblies at the time. The Army Air Forces wanted improvements to the design to make it easier to manufacture, assemble, handle, transport, and stockpile. The wartime project W47 was continued, and drop tests resumed in January 1946. The Mark III Mod Zero Fat Man was ordered into production in mid 1946. High explosives were manufactured by the Salt Wells Pilot Plant, which had been established by the Manhattan Project as part of Project Camel, and a new plant was established at the Iowa Army Ammunition Plant. Mechanical components were made or procured by the Rock Island Arsenal. Electrical and mechanical components for about 50 bombs were stockpiled at Kirtland Army Airfield by August 1946, but only nine plutonium cores were available. Production of the Mod Zero ended in December 1948, by which time there were still only 53 cores available. It was replaced by improved versions known as Mods 1 and 2 which contained a number of minor changes, the most important of which was that they did not charge the X-unit firing systems capacitors until released from the aircraft. The Mod Zeros were withdrawn from service between March and July 1949, and by October they had all been rebuilt as Mods 1 and 2. Some 120 Mark III Fat Man units were added to the stockpile between 1947 and 1949 when it was superseded by the Mark IV nuclear bomb. The Mark III Fat Man was retired in 1950. A nuclear strike would have been a formidable undertaking in the post war 1940s due to the limitations of the Mark III Fat Man. The lead acid batteries which powered the fusing system remained charged for only 36 hours, after which they needed to be recharged. To do this meant disassembling the bomb, and recharging took 72 hours. The batteries had to be removed in any case after nine days or they corroded. The plutonium core could not be left in for much longer, because its heat damaged the high explosives. Replacing the core also required the bomb to be completely disassembled and reassembled. This required about 40 to 50 men and took between 56 and 72 hours, depending on the skill of the bomb assembly team, and the Armed Forces Special Weapons Project had only three teams in June 1948. The only aircraft capable of carrying the bomb were Silverplate B-29s, and the only group equipped with them was the 509th Bombardment Group at Walker Air Force Base in Roswell, New Mexico. They would first have to fly to Sandia Base to collect the bombs, and then to an overseas base from which a strike could be mounted. The Soviet Union's first nuclear weapon was based closely on Fat Man's design thanks to spies Klaus Fuchs, Theodore Hall, and David Greenglass, who provided them with secret information concerning the Manhattan Project and Fat Man. It was detonated on 29 August 1949 as part of Operation First Lightning. Topic notes Topic References Baker, Richard D., Hecker, Siegfried S., Harbour, Delbert R. 1983. Plutonium, A Wartime Nightmare But a Metallurgist's Dream PDF. Los Alamos Science. pp. 142-151. Retrieved of November 2010. Campbell, Richard H. 2005. The Silverplate Bombers, A History and Registry of the Enola Gay and Other B-29s Configured to Carry Atomic Bombs. Jefferson, North Carolina, McFarland & Company. ISBN 978-0-7864-2139-8. OCLC 58554961. Coster Mullen, John Atom Bombs, The Top Secret Inside Story of Little Boy and Fat Man. Waukesha, Wisconsin, J. Coster Mullen. OCLC 298514167. Craven, Wesley, Kate, James, eds. 1953. The Pacific, Matterhorn to Nagasaki. The Army Air Forces in World War II. Chicago, The University of Chicago Press.
OCLC 256469807. Hansen, Chuck Volume 5, U.S. Nuclear Weapons Histories. Swords of Armageddon, U.S. Nuclear Weapons Development Since 1945. Sunnyvale, California, Chukalea Publications. ISBN 978-0-9791915-0-3. OCLC 231585284. Hewlett, Richard G., Anderson, Oscar E. The New World, 1939-1946 PDF. University Park, Pennsylvania State University Press. ISBN 978-0-520-07186-5. OCLC 637,004,643. Retrieved 26 March 2013. Hodison, Lillian, Henriksen, Paul W., Mead, Roger A., Westfall, Catherine L. 1993. Critical Assembly, A Technical History of Los Alamos During the Oppenheimer Years, 1943-1945. New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-44132-2. OCLC 26764320. Jones, Vincent 1985. Manhattan, The Army and the Atomic Bomb PDF. Washington, D.C., United States Army Center of Military History. OCLC 10913875. Retrieved 25 August 2013. Malik, John September 1985. The Yields of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki Nuclear Explosions PDF. Los Alamos National Laboratory. P. 16. LA 8819. Archived from the original PDF on 27 February 2008. Retrieved 27 February 2008. Nichols, Kenneth D. 1987. The Road to Trinity. New York, William Morrow & Company. ISBN 978-0-688-06910-0. OCLC 15223648. Rhodes, Richard 1986. The Making of the Atomic Bomb. New York, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 978-0-684-81378-3. OCLC 13793436. Serber, Robert, Kreese, Robert P. 1998. Peace and War, Reminiscences of a Life on the Frontiers of Science. New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 9780231105049. Hansen, Jeffrey B. 1997. War's End, An Eyewitness Account of America's Last Atomic Mission. Quill Publishing. ISBN 978-0-380-78874-3. Teller, Edward. 2001. Memoirs, A Twentieth Century Journey in Science and Politics. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Perseus Publishing. ISBN 9780738205328. OCLC 48150267. Topic external links Video footage of the bombing of Nagasaki silent on YouTube Fatman model in QuickTime VR format Samuels, David the 23rd of January 2009 the 15th of December 2008. Atomic John, a truck driver uncovers secrets about the first nuclear bombs. A reporter at large column. The New Yorker. Essay and interview with John Coster Mullen, the author of Atom Bombs, The Top Secret Inside Story of Little Boy and Fat Man, 2003 first printed in 1996, self-published, considered a definitive text about Fat Man, illustrations from which are used in the physics package section above. The Half-Life of Genius Physicist Remer Schreiber 2017, on IMDb. Biographical film about the life and times of physicist Remer Schreiber.